Now at Visco we work with importers and distributors and typically they're coming to us for, for some of the reasons listed here. Uh, loss of efficiency due to double and triple entry into multiple systems and what we mean by that is um, we see a lot of companies using QuickBooks uh, or some other accounting system but, uh, but a lot of times QuickBooks and there's because of the lack of functionality in QuickBooks for the industry what they end up doing is kind of working around that or supplementing that with spreadsheets or you know some access system or something homegrown but they end up entering that same information multiple times and and that causes problems and that obviously it's not very efficient but also if there's a mistake made um, you know that there, there's there's errors all over the place and, and room for human error that way um, Another thing is problems sneaking up on people because of overwhelming details. This also kind of speaks to multi entering into multiple systems. Um, the, the more detail you're handling, the more opportunity for error and the more, more opportunity for problems sneaking up on you. Uh, another thing is, is there is a lot of paperwork involved in importing and distributing. Um, and when you're generating that all manually, it's a terrific waste of time. Um, and then there's there's customs information and then the new 10 plus 2 or importer security filing the ISF form that needs to be filed um, these are all things that, that that people are struggling with right now uh, loss of opportunity due to lack of visibility in the inventory and by that we mean um, just not knowing what you have on the water not knowing what you have on order overseas um, maybe not even know what you have in the warehouse um, can cause you know a salesperson may not necessarily uh, you know, get a sale that he could have otherwise gotten because he might not know inventory is available, or the other way around, um, overselling um, because you think inventory is there that's not. Um, and then, of course, the other thing is on the financial side, relying on average landed costs or um, some made-up landed cost as opposed to actual landed cost based on actual information. So let's take a look at, at how we can help with some of these things by using Visco. So I'm going to switch over to the Visco system here. It's a web-based system. We're running in the web browser. This is the home page. And a couple things to mention on the home page. There is a live link into the U.S. Customs website. There is um, these four primary modules that make up the system. And the integration with the QuickBooks system is, is here under Finances, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, but alerts, these are going to be customized on a per user basis. The system will alert you to potential problems before they become problems. So let's take a look at one example here is under container alerts we have late shipments. If I click on that, it's going to load up in another browser or another tab here and show me all containers that I have or all shipments that I have that are running late, meaning we expected to receive them in already based on our ETA but we have not yet received them in. So these are the various containers that we have out there, the status of them, the last time someone updated information about them, um, our shipping dates, the vessel, the voyage, and then the specific orders that are on that, that shipment. Of course, if we want to from here, we can drill down into any of these shipments to get additional details um, about what's, what's in the shipment. And that again loads in another tab here. And this shows me, okay, in this case, I have uh, some calcium and some radiator fan motors, 1,000 pounds of calcium and 3,000 pieces of radiator fan motors. General information would be our shipping dates. What do we have? Uh, you know, advanced copies or fax copies or originals of the documents, the port that it's coming into, shipping company, our bill of lading number, bill of lading date, um, various other information that we're tracking about the shipment itself. Um, not going to worry about these things for now, but comments would be uh, just internal information that you might want to keep about the shipment. And by the way, what a lot of our customers will do is they will actually have their overseas sourcing agents or maybe the suppliers themselves logging in with their own login information and just maintaining this, this aspect of the system or this information. Um, and the reason being is, is number one, they get the information first, and number two, normally it's, it's cheaper to have someone overseas doing this than, than doing it in-house. Links are going to be documents that the system will generate for you um, to assist you both in clearing the goods with the broker instruction sheet and the importer security filing, uh, moving the goods once they are received 
at the port of arrival, if you're arranging for trucking from the port to the warehouse or to your customer, then it'll generate a, a bill of lading document and the ability to make adjustments to inventory from here if uh, the packing list doesn't necessarily match up with your PO or something. You also have the ability to upload documents and images. So this is going to be your digital library that you'll have here associated with each shipment. Um, and in this case, we have a bill of lading document and a container instruction sheet. But if we wanted to, we can add uh, the commercial invoice or the packing list or some other document. Um, packing list, let's say. We're choosing from a file on our computer somewhere, um, selecting it, and then upload, and then that will add it as part of your digital library. So that's maintaining uh, container information, and once it's in there, there's all kinds of tools available to you to, you know, extract that information out. So if you have someone on the customer service side and they want to look at a customer's order and see the status of it, um, you can do that. You know, see when that's due in. A couple of things I want to mention here is in the sales and purchases menu, if we go down into products, and I'll just pick a product that I know has some, some decent data. Let's use this caustic soda beads. By the way, these all, all the products that you see here, these items will import for you from QuickBooks or from whatever accounting system you're using. We'll import product information, import customer information, import vendor information, so you don't have to re-enter all that manually when you go live on Visco. So this would be general information about uh, the caustic soda, last user to make a change and when they made that change, um, a default sale price, purchase price. Um, but a couple things I want to mention here is same kind of thing here. You can have a digital library associated with the product. So if you wanted to store uh, material safety data sheets, images of the product, um, spec sheets of some kind, drawings, you can upload them and associate them with this product. So you have, uh, you know, as I said, a digital library here. Um, customers is going to be who, who you sell that, this product to based on sales history. Vendors being who you buy it from. Manufacturers would be, if you're buying from a trading company or an exporter, um, but you need to know who the original manufacturer of the product is as well, you can, on an order-by-order -order basis, establish not only who you're buying from, but who manufactured the goods. Uh, so this would be the manufacturers. Sales history, a purchase history. Ventures are going to be, and this is kind of unique to Visco, uh, we sort of branded this term venture to refer to a specific specific shipment of that product. So in this case our venture number 12088 star 1 star 1 means our PO number 12088 the first item on that order and the first shipment. So in this case it was a shipment of 188,000 pounds of caustic soda beads the container that it came in on them are shipping dates. If we want we can drill down into this specific shipment to get additional details specifically financial details about this shipment and again, it's going to load in this new tab here, which we'll open up. And it shows us here that our l latest projected cost is 73 cents a pound. Again, if you're buying in pieces, this would be, this would show, you know, your cost per piece. But in this case, we're buying in pounds. So it's, it's 73 cents per pound is our latest projected cost. Now, why do we call it latest projected cost instead of landed cost? Um, there's a reason, because what we're using to calculate this cost are all the actual costs we've received in against this shipment. In this case, we have the material costs, we have freight, we have marine insurance, um, uh, some discrepancy in the exchange rate, um, could be various other things, warehousing costs, commissions, things like that. So these are the actual costs we've received in, but the reason why we call it latest projected costs is because we're also factoring in accruals, and these are going to be expected costs that we anticipate to receive, but have not yet received in. So you can see in the case of uh, ocean freight, we have $18,000 accrued or expected based on some calculation that's going on behind the scenes. We've not yet actually received in that bill so that accrual remains out there. Once the bill's received in, it overwrites the accrual and 
and this number, this latest projected cost number, becomes a more and more accurate number uh, as time goes on. Uh, you can also look at sales, specific sales against this shipment, what customers it went to, when it shipped out, that kind of thing. And as a result, we have our sales to date in terms of dollars, our cost of sales, and our actual gross profit on this specific shipment of this product. In this case, we've taken a $16,000 loss on the shipment so far, but we have $24,000 remaining in uh, inventory value. Um, so that's the concept behind this, this venture analysis, the shipment level profit and loss. But I think you can kind of get the idea at this point that once you have information at this level, once you know exactly how much you're making on every single shipment, then you can expand on that to say, okay, how much am I making of all sales to one customer? How much am I making of all sales to um, of all sales of a particular product, or even all sales of this product to this customer? Um, so you can see your your exact profitability, uh, you know, across all aspects of the business. One other tool I wanted to look at just in this this brief demonstration here would be uh, another inventory tool called Product Position, and this is the ability to look at your position, inventory position on a product, not just now, but forecast it out over time based on what you have on order, um, what you have uh, on order overseas, what you have on the water, uh, what you have in the warehouse, and what you have committed to customers. So this is also typical in Visco. We're using an Excel spreadsheet to generate reports. Um, there's actually two reporting methods in Visco, one of which is Crystal Reports, um, the other is Excel, and actually in either case you have the ability to generate your own reports, uh, not just use the, the sort of canned reports that Visco makes available to you. Um, the other side of that is you can use, we can, we can generate custom reports for you, so you don't have to um, so you don't have to create them all on your own if you don't want to either. Okay, so in the position sheet, what you're looking at here is in this top section within these big red letters here, you've got what you have inbound shipments. So this is going to be the vendor that came in from, the, the venture or specific order number that's related to, and the status of that shipment. So PO issued means that you've placed a purchase order, it's been confirmed, but the supplier hasn't shipped it out yet. In transit would mean it's on the water, and then you've got things that are in the warehouse, they'll reference the warehouse name there. So right now I have a total on-hand inventory of 312,000 pounds. I have several past due shipments, um, another shipment coming in January, two more in February, several more in March. So this is kind of over the next few months what I have coming in. And then down here at the bottom, I can see what I have committed out to customers. So this would be each row here would represent a customer order, and the quantity would appear in the period that that customer expects that order to be delivered. So the important number here, I think, to look at is you've got your inbound total for each period. So in other words, in February, for example, we have 20,000 pounds coming in. Our outbound total for that period is 10,000. We have 10,000 pounds that are anticipated to go out to the customer and then whether we're long or short for that period and then our cumulative inventory balance meaning based on what we have on hand right now plus what we have coming in in January minus what we have going out in January what is our inventory position going to look like in February you know based on actual orders so the idea here is you have the ability to look out three months, six months, a year out and see what your inventory position is going to look like. So this way you can start making decisions now that will impact your inventory position then. Obviously if you're dealing with an overseas supplier, you may be waiting you know, six weeks, eight weeks or longer before you actually receive that inventory. So you need to know way ahead of time uh, how much inventory you're going to have available. So what I would suggest is if you're interested in doing a, um, a demonstration, what we do is we do live demonstrations through the web that take um, 45 minutes to an hour 
and um, it, you know, depending on questions, it, it could be f even you know half hour, forty five minutes, an hour, and then you can you know ask. We can discuss specifically what your requirements are and see if you know Visco can help you there. So to do that, you can visit viscosoftware.com or dial 845-383-3800 or you can email tpec at viscosoftware.com.